Giovanni Dennis with the Midday News, a special welcome if you're joining us online at onespotmedia.com. Students sitting the primary exit profile PEP ability test this year will have an additional month to prepare. This as the Education Ministry has ceded to cause to delay the sitting of the examination. Shamila Pullen has our update. For weeks, the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, has been raising concerns about students' readiness for the Grade 6 Primary Exit Profile PEP Ability Test. The JTA also asked for the February 23 day to be pushed back. In a media release issued Friday morning, Education Minister Favel Williams has responded to that call. The Education Minister said March 23 is a new date for the PEP Ability Test. Mrs. Williams said despite the ability test not requiring learned knowledge based on the grade 6 curriculum, the ministry decided to set a new date to give more preparation time to students. Mrs. Williams said the decision came after extensive consultation. The education minister said no decision has been made to change the dates for the curriculum-based tests and performance tasks in April and May. We're going through a pandemic. Uh, things are fluid. Uh, there are many more of our schools that need to come back online for face-to-face -face so that they have an, an, an opportunity to take advantage of all the modalities, not just the online and the audiovisual and the learning kit, but they would have the ability to do face-to-face. -face. Sometimes schools focus on particular grades and so on. So it is an environment in which we have to be nimble in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Jasford Gabriel, welcomes the decision but has concerns. As to whether this, that time is adequate, time will have to tell because we are in uncertain times. And much of this depends on how we're planning out in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are seeing um, rising numbers again. And of course, the space is that the students will have to sit the exams will have to be ready to facilitate them. And as it is today, most of these schools would not have been given the green light just yet by the Ministry of Health. Mrs. Williams reiterates that the ministry is ready to administer the PEP exams. Those exams, she said, will be done at schools. However, she points out that all schools have not been inspected as yet to ensure they are compliant with COVID-19 protocols. We are working with the Ministry of Health and Wellness they are the entity uh, to do the physical inspection, um, you know, and they just have to go out and, and take a look at their checklist of things and where there are gaps in the schools. The ministry comes in and works with the school to try to get those resolved. You, you will note that there are many, many more schools that have been approved for face-to-face -face now than when we made the announcement in December. So we have to be working on all fronts simultaneously to get things ready um, to meet uh, the new day. Mrs. Williams says her ministry will continue to work with the Ministry of Health to ensure more schools are inspected to attain a satisfactory report. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. And just to reiterate, March 25 is the new start date for the PEP ability test. To other news now, the field hospital being erected on the grounds of the Falmouth General Public Hospital in Trelawney will not be completed by month end as was scheduled. This according to opposition leader Mark Golding following a tour of the facility recently. However, Mr. Golding said construction of the building has reached an advanced stage. We're pleased to see that the, 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 um, the new building for the field hospital is you know well advanced it's it ought to have been finished this month it will not be finished this month i don't think but they're still you know contractors trying very hard to deliver it as soon as possible after the end of january 36 beds it, it's designed for and the quicker it is finished have in regard to the fact that the spike is on and we will see continued cases it is important and imperative that it is finished quickly so that it can take the strain off the eight that are here just 
In addition, Mr. Golding said the intensive care unit at the Falmouth Hospital will soon need to be expanded. Opposition spokesman and health Dr. Maurice Guy explained that the unit has been facilitating patients from the Cornwall Regional Hospital to help ease the burden on that facility. The western end of the island has been experiencing a spike in COVID-19 cases, which has placed a strain on the health facilities there. We're working under very adverse circumstances. Adverse meaning that they have to take the spill over from Cornell Regional Hospital, which is in the rehabilitation restoration phase. Um, we are we are pleased with what we have seen. We have seen that they, despite the numbers, the nurses and the medical team have been very dedicated in providing the health care. To the latest on the coronavirus, the country recorded 27 new COVID-19 cases on Thursday. This has pushed the total number of cases to 15,462. Meanwhile, one more person has died from the illness. The country's COVID-19 death toll is now 345. 93 people are hospitalized with the respiratory illness. 10 are critically ill. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company has responded to concerns raised by passengers about long waiting time for buses. Codian Barrett has the details. It is a new year but not without lingering challenges for the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC. One of the challenges is the long waiting time for buses. This has led some commuters to label the bus company as unreliable. Deputy Operations Manager at the JUTC, Owen Smith, has since apologized while outlining a way forward. We are sorry for the difficulties you are experiencing right now. We see, that we, we see the long waiting times and we see what is happening as far as it relates to the general level of service. The pandemic has also hit the state-owned bus company. This, as the number of passengers who can ride on a bus, was reduced to just those who can get a seat before the Prime Minister announced earlier this week that standing will be allowed again. It was also reported that 35 buses, which the company bought in 2016 from China, have been destroyed by overloading and the rigors of the hilly terrain of rural St. Andrew. A delay in the shipment of parts has also caused several buses to be parked. Since COVID-19, we have been having a difficulty getting our parts into the island. And this has resulted in the number of our buses available for dispatch going down significantly um, post ver uh, pre versus post-COVID. Mr. Smith says the company is committed to having the matter resolved. The, the long waiting times, we are doing different um, um, uh, um, um, technical um technical tasks in terms of rerouting. We have also been trying our best to, to communicate more with our commuters at the different um, 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 major nodes, like our downtown hub and our half street transportation center. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. It's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have more when we return. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Detectives in Trelawney have charged a woman after she hid a fugitive. 42-year-old Joan Turner was charged with accessory after the fact after she was found harboring the man who was wanted for the murder of a four-year-old girl in Freeman's district. Ms. Turner, otherwise called Miss Ray, is also from Freeman's Hall. The police say Turner hid Kevin Williams in a closet in her bedroom. Williams, also known as Bugged, was later found, arrested and charged with murder. Ms. Turner was subsequently arrested and charged. A St. Mary man is demanding justice this afternoon. Conrad Rose was, says he was treated unfairly by the justice system after he was charged twice by the court for a tra traffic ticket offence. Mr. Rose says... dollars for it. However, a couple months after a warrant came out for me, for my arrest, said I do not pay a ticket. When they all on to him, bring to me to put my station, they take me to court. The judge had me $3,000. And I paid the money. I, I said to the judge, I paid the ticket already. He said, if the ticket is paid, it will warrant won't come out for me. After I paid the money, I go by the tax office and collect the original slip. 
Mr. Rose said after he paid the ticket fine, he took the receipt to the police station and then to the courthouse. The police in St. Mary told TVJ News that the first ticket was not in the system and so there was no record of payment. Hence, he will not be refunded. Mr. Rose is dissatisfied. I need but my money that I spend because if, it, if money never will pay, we will go to jail for at least 15 days or 10 days. So I need back, didn't need back my money where I spent for the last, for the last uh, 3,000 euros charge me. Normalcy has been restored to Harbour Street in Portland. This after the street was ordered closed by the Portland Health Department because of a sewage overflow on the roadway. The National Water Commission fixed the problem after complaints from residents and businesses. Sandy Williams reports. Some vendors and business operators have had to deal with the stench of raw sewage spewing from a manhole on Harbour Street in Portland Thursday morning. Pedestrians walking past the overflowing manhole had to keep an eye out for splashes from motorists. Fitzroy Curate operates a restaurant adjacent to the overflowing manhole. The pit apparently not drying because you can't see next door to the station that's overflowing too. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what to do with corporate, we have a grease trap, we do everything for them. So we don't know what cause it. But it wasn't long before the Portland Health Department was alerted about the matter. The department ordered the street closed as the stench had become unbearable. The sewage is just like a five step from here. Mm -hmm. And they need to come rectify the problem. Because remember elder people and then the corona, I have to inhale and exhale. So it's like you're damaged inside of the same way. So them for come rectify it. Yesterday afternoon, the National Water Commission dispatched a team to the area to fix the problem. The overflow was as a result of a blockage in our sewer network, which was caused by grease entering our network from an existing customer. This blockage was cleared by the NWC's wastewater team and the affected areas were cleaned and disinfected. It is extremely important that customers be reminded that their grease traps are to be checked and cleaned regularly to prevent incidents of this nature from happening. Additionally, the NWC is reminding the residents of Port Antonio that the sewer system is operational and they are strongly encouraged to get connected to the utilities network. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Back out west, the first artisan village in Hampton Wharf in Falmouth, Trelawney, is slated to be operational by July. According to Tourism Minister Ed Bartlett, the plan is to revive tourism activity in the parish. Following a tour of the facility on Wednesday, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett said the construction phase of the artisan village at Hampton Wharf in Falmouth, Trelawney, has been substantially completed, with finishing work to be finalized by the end of March. The artisan village, which is the first of a series of facilities to be located in resort areas across the island, will accommodate several locally owned small and medium-sized enterprises. It will also offer visitors an opportunity to enjoy Jamaican cuisine, art, craft and culture. We, we're making this into a really um, iconic attraction by itself and we are pulling on our culture and the history of the Falmouth area and the myths and storylines that have um, characterized the, the, the story of um, Falmouth over the years. The project, which is funded by the Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, is expected to cost $750 million, an investment the minister says is well worth it. It's the first of its kind to be built, arguably, in the English-speaking Caribbean. It's going to enable us to give a space for not just production, but marketing and a mix of other kinds of cultural assets which Jamaica has. The project was delayed because of the pandemic. Despite concerns of slow tourism activity, Mr. Bartlett is staying optimistic. I continue to build capacity. That's what I'm about, build resilience. I'm about enabling you to be at a position where once 
the industry turns as we expect it to. You will be right there and ready to, to operate. Um, and you have a responsibility to keep yourself also in shape and to be at the right place. This project is a collaborative effort between the Port Authority of Jamaica, PAJ, and the Urban Development Corporation, UDC. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. Vendors in Port Maria St. Mary have moved into their new home a week ahead of schedule. This as the new Port Maria market was opened on Thursday. Those who will use the market reacted to the opening. It's a very great day today, you know. Great day to see me in a uh, new market for 40 years, you know. This, uh, this is a long time in, 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 in the pipeline and so far it really realized now. So it's a blessing because it's important for us to maintain civic pride, comply with law and order, so that we can have a good society and everybody can see it. Happy, 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 sir, happy, happy. Long time we want to see this, long time we want to see this man. Well, long time, and it's happening now. Earlier this week, the mayor of Port Maria, Richard Crary, said the market would be opened next week. He said when it opens, the police will take a zero-tolerance approach to vending on the streets of Port Maria. News and Sports, one of two developments which could affect the official outcome of the 2020 Local Jockeys Championship has been settled. Spencer Darlington has the details. Three-time former champion jockey Dane Nelson and the 2018 winner Anthony Thomas ended the 2020 racing season in a provisional tie with 84 wins each. However, Nelson's tally has now been reduced by one following the disqualification of Patriarch, which he had ridden to victory on January 4 of last year. The first instance tribunal of the Jamaica Racing Commission has concluded an investigation into a positive urine sample returned by Patriarch for the prohibited substance furosemide following the conclusion of the race in question. A release from the JRC said the split sample was subsequently analyzed at the University of the West Indies Mona Analytical Chemistry Lab where it was confirmed that furosemide was present in the sample. As a result, Patriarch has been disqualified from the race in question. JRC Chairman Clovis Metcalf weighed in on this latest development. What it means as we speak now is that Dane Nelson has gone down one winner from 84 to 83 and while Anthony Thomas remains at 84. So as of now, Anthony Thomas is the leading jockey, but it's not over yet. Meanwhile, the first instance tribunal also ruled that trainer Anthony Nunes and groom Kevin Williams failed to rebut the presumption of negligence surrounding the positive test returned by Patriarch. As a result, Nunes was fined $50,000 while Williams was penalized with a $25,000 fine. The fines are to be paid within 30 days. However, the JRC chairman was quick to point out that there is another outstanding matter which could influence the final outcome of the 2020 jockeys race. We still have to await the appeal of the disqualification on which Anthony Thomas got the winner. That was, I think, uh, Mr. Universe. He got, and uh, Carlson was disqualified. So based on that appeal, and if there are any positives coming out during the month of December, then very soon, by about mid-February, we should be in a position to declare the winner of the Jockeys' Championship for last year. The second scenario surrounds the Anthony Baba Nunes conditioned Corazon, which was ridden to victory by Dick Cardenas on October 10 of last year, but later disqualified and placed out of the race for causing interference. That race was awarded to Mr. Universe, who was ridden by Thomas. However, it's understood that trainer Nunes has lodged an appeal against that outcome, which means if that decision is reversed, one victory would also be subtracted from Thomas's tally. Spencer Darlington, TVJ Sports. That's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.